don't we don't march and protest because we like to march and protest. All we want to do is be free. Sean King from New York. Sean King, good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. You know, on this past Tuesday, I told you about a man named Rodney Reed who was on death row in Texas for a crime he did not commit. We are now just 12 short days away from Rodney being executed, and we're doing anything and everything we can to help save this man's life. Just a few minutes ago, we crossed 2 million signatures on the petition that we created for Rodney. And if you have not signed that, you can go to freerodneyreed.com. It is now the largest, fastest growing human rights petition of all time. Tens of thousands of our listeners have already signed the petition. And it has garnered the support of entertainers and athletes and others. But still, that's not enough. As high tech as our viral movement has been over these past few days, with our website getting millions and millions of visitors from all over the world, some very low tech decisions have to be made to save the life of Rodney Reed. If signatures alone save this man's life, he'd be saved already. We need the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, who is one of the most conservative men in this country, to issue a stay of execution. The Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles can also do the very same thing. The local district attorney can remove the death penalty from this case. Now, hundreds of experts from all over the country have studied the evidence and have said that Rodney Reed is not guilty at all of this crime, that he had nothing to do with it. The Innocence Project, which turns down nearly 95% of all cases that come their way, they've taken on this case and declared that Rodney Reed is innocent. Four of the most revered forensic scientists in this nation have studied the case and said that it is scientifically impossible that Rodney Reed committed this murder. People who testified in the case all the way back in 1998 have recanted their testimony. Witnesses who were silent in 1998 have come forward. In case you're not familiar with this story, Rodney Reed was found guilty of sexually assaulting and murdering a woman named Stacy Stites. But the story that Rodney did it is outrageous. The story is that Rodney Reed didn't know her, had never met her, and flagged her down in a truck in the middle of nowhere on an old country road in the middle of the night, a place he had never been, and committed these crimes then. But that story is full of lies. Stacy Stites has friends and family who have now come forward to say that she told them she was in a relationship with Rodney Reed. He was not a stranger on the side of the road somewhere. Her fiancé, a brutal police officer named Jimmy Fennell, was later convicted of kidnapping and sexually assaulting a woman on the side of a road. He was overheard by his own friends and fellow police officers, all white men who have now come forward saying they heard him saying she got what she deserved. They heard him saying that he knew she was dating a black man. Other people said they had overheard him before threatening to kill her. But here we are anyway. All of that evidence was never entered into Rodney's case. And we need the people in power, at the very least, to at least delay this execution. So here's what I'm asking all of our listeners to do today. Later this morning, when all the government offices are open in Texas in just a few hours, I need you to go to freerodneyreed.com. If you haven't already signed the petition, please sign it. But then scroll down just a little bit. And we have five different phone numbers that I'm asking you to call. When you call those numbers... The first voice that you're going to hear is actually mine. I am literally going to be there on the line talking you through what you need to say, and I'll do so on each call that you make. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we made over 15,000 phone calls. Today, that number has to be even bigger. And when you call, be respectful but firm. Let them know that the state of Texas is about to execute an innocent man named Rodney Reed, that you are begging them to stop this execution. It's wrong. It's immoral. 26 brave legislators in Texas from the Texas State Senate, 13 Democrats and 13 Republicans have now signed a joint letter begging the governor to stop this execution. This morning, the Catholic Church issued a statement, and it was it was a bold, brave statement saying that they aren't even asking for the state of Texas to have mercy on Rodney Reed because mercy is what you give guilty people. They are asking that Rodney Reed have justice. They are, they are against the death penalty, but in their statement, they said that this is bigger than that because Texas is about to execute an innocent man. 
I've got to run, but please, later this morning, go to freerodneyreed.com, sign up, make those phone calls with us. The phone calls are way more important even than your signature on the petition because this is your chance for them to hear your voice, for them to hear your concern, human to human, person to person. We have just 12 days left to fight to save this man's life. Take care, everybody. Okay, I got a stupid question. You get the no, stay no, of ex- you get the stay of execution, but do you get a retrial? No, no, it's not a dumb question at all. You know, Tom, what I've learned is most of us don't really know how this stuff works behind the scenes, and that's right. how they want it. So the stay of execution is just really a temporary delay. And at this point, as you could imagine, Rodney's family, Rodney himself, even a delay. Would, would help everybody at this point. But a delay is just a delay. We'd rather have a delay than him being executed in 12 days. Of a delay just gives the Innocence Project and the attorneys more time to file more legal petitions, not like the petition we have online, to to try to get a new trial. It's difficult to get any court system to grant the new trial, but I am convinced the the Innocence Project is filing a new legal brief on this coming Monday that I think could and should uh, grant him a new trial. But we'll we'll only know when we see it. And because he's already new, lost one appeal. He's he's lost an appeal. He's won an appeal. Um, you know, he was scheduled to be executed years ago, and um, and so we're hoping now that because of people who've come forward just over this past year who were either too afraid or just didn't understand their role in the case before, people who've come forward over this past year weren't included in those previous appeals. So you have different legal teams. You have teams of of lawyers and others and and civic activists like yourself working to get the execution delayed, and then you have another who are working for his appeal um, and and putting that into play in case, can the governor say uh, we are going to delay the execution and give him a new trial or at least consider the appeal for a new trial? Yeah, that's right. You know, the the governor in making the statement can say, hey, we're, we're delaying this execution and I am now asking our court systems or our experts or the board of pardons and paroles to reconsider the legal briefs that have been issued. Our our guess is that if the governor delays the execution, that's all he'll do. He'll mm-hmm. just delay it and then allow whatever else has to happen to happen in the courts. I, I'd be shocked if he issued a statement. Yeah. The governor could also commute his sentence from the death penalty to life in prison. None of us want uh, Rodney Reed to have life in prison, but even that would be a huge relief so that this kind of looming death penalty is not uh, standing over Rodney. George W. Bush did that just one time when he was governor, and that was for a man who was convicted of a crime that he believed to be guilty, but they still commuted his sentence. Um, we will see. You know, the the current governor, Governor Abbott, has only done that one time. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so if Rodney Reed didn't do it, you know who did, and, and do you have evidence to go – to go uh, and bring this person to trial? Oh, listen, man. The man we believe did it, the man Dr. Phil McGraw believes did it, the police officer Jimmy Fennell, there's so much evidence. He should be charged. Absolutely. He could and, be found guilty. And that would free Rodney. Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. I wish President Trump could do something instead of worrying about Suge Knight. <laughs> he could, see, right. He could at least make anything. a statement. Yeah, he, mm. could, he could make a statement about it. He's got sway with the governor. Okay. Yeah. We'll All see. right. Yeah. Wow. Take care. Good y'all. job, man. Stay on the case. Thanks, man.